Hello my darlings, welcome to my channel. If you see my channel for the first time, my name is Julie Rack and if you're my returning subscriber, you are all welcome. I'm sorry that um uh, it took me so long to post this video, okay? But today I'm going to be putting you through on how to make this. This is the continuation for a previous video. I have made a pants tutorial, okay? If you haven't seen it, please click on the link on the screen or on the comment section or on the description box so that you can go and get your pants done also okay but for today we are making the shirt and if you notice that the shirt color is different from the one on the white dress okay is because this is what i want to make for myself if you want me to make a, a color for the one on the white dress please leave your comment below i will do that but for today we are going to be making this particular one on the red you seen okay so we are going to begin now on the table i have a two uh, pieces or a two pattern here that is going to serve as my front and my back pattern and the front pattern is one inch bigger than the back because of the button allowance okay and also take note that uh, this shirt is a cut together sleeves okay so this is a cut together sleeve so that is what you need to know so what you're going to do you're going to get a pattern paper that is wide enough to contain your sleeve length okay you're going to take your measurement take your shoulder measurement and then take the and add the the length of the sleeve that you want and then you're going to use that length of the total total everything that is what you're going to use to fold your pattern okay or to cut out your pattern all right so what i'm doing here i create a starting point which is going to become my shoulder line all right so from this line now i will be using it to take all my vertical measurement so i'm confirming this line to show you that uh, the front is one inch bigger than the back because of the button allowance so please try to keep allowance of one inch for your button allowance okay there is this pattern i'm going to show you, you don't need to keep so much allowance so one inch is enough all right so as you can see the total of my pattern is 14 inches which is not enough for me so when i'm going to cut it on my fabric i'm going to add my sleeve uh add two inches to complete my sleeve length so what i did here i took 2.5 inches for my neck width then for the back neck depth i took one inch for the back neck depth okay if you don't want your neck to be that too wide, don't take more than uh, uh, 2.5 inches if you are on a small size. And then uh, my front uh, neck depth is 2.5 also because I'm going to be using 0 0.5 to join the my, my collar. So from this end now, when you see me working on, I drop it with 0 0.5 inch, okay, for shoulders, uh, shoulder slope, okay. I mark 0 0.1.5 inches sorry 1.5 inches for my shoulder slope so i'm going to connect it from my neck width to the point where i mark that 1.5 down okay so i'm going to connect also my back uh, neck uh, depth and also my front neck depth just like you see me doing okay so the back is one inch and the front is 2.5 inches okay now we are done from here the next i'm going to be working on my vertical measurement which is from my shoulder to my bust line from my shoulder to my bust line is 9.5 inches so that is where i mark it there all right and then the next thing now i'm taking from my shoulder to where i want my top to be this is my top length and i'm making use of 16 inches okay if you want your top to be more higher or longer then at this point everything determined it depends on you okay so i'm laboring this part my shoulder my bust and my top length so i use 16 inches because it's a crop top all right so the next thing now i'm going to be imputing my rambo circumference okay my rambo circumference is 8.5 okay i'm going to add additional two inches okay i'm adding additional two inches to my measurement because it's a free dress okay you are not expected to be uh, very fitted so 
the measurement i have on my bust line i'm going to place it on my waistline okay which is 10.5 okay so that is what i just did now and i draw this line up there so my slip opening is a uh, nine inches okay so that is where i mark there that's nine inches okay so i'm going to be connecting from this point here but first of all i need to create my cuff from this side just like you see me doing okay did you see the way i place my tape my my french cuff okay you, then i'm going to connect it like you see me doing now for you to be sure of how many inches i i came down before i create my cuff line from that point where that cuff started from okay is three inches Con mark three inches below before you create your cuff okay so that is what i did so from the edge there i mark one inch above to create that curvy part for my uh shirt okay if you look at the, the shirt very well it's not uh, just a straight cut something is something that it has that a little curvy by the side okay so that is what i just did you're going to mark that one inch there and then you place your tape just the way you see me doing and then you're going to connect it so once i'm done i'm going to add 0 0.5 inch to join my shoulder together and then i'm going to indicate at that part that i'm going to be adding two inches there to complete the my slip length okay once i'm done then i'm going to add my stitching allowance that is 0 0.5 inch stitching allowance all round like you see me doing okay i have added 0 0.5 inch from the shoulder i added 0 0.5 inch from the bottom part where i'm going to hem my my shirt okay and basically that is it so i extended this line out to show you where i'm going to cut so i trace this part so that when i'm going to cut the the front i should know where i'm cutting at the front okay so so now i'm cutting at the front neck depth just like you see me doing okay and this is where my buttons are going to be and i'm also laboring this part for me to know when i'm going to cut it on the fabric i will know this one belongs to that okay so now this is the fabric i'm using the leftover fabric that i use for my pants uh that i used to make my pants i used two and a half yard of fabric so the remaining one that i cut out from my tro uh, from the, the pieces that i cut out to make my pants this is the remaining one that i'm going to use to cut uh to make my shirt okay i'm on a small size so that is why um a two point a two and a half yard of fabric was enough for me so right here i have about uh about 17.5 inches that is big enough for me that is like it's more than enough for my for my sleeves okay so 17.5 inches i remember i said i'm going to be adding additional two inches from the sleeve right yeah so that is is, is enough and take note that when you're going to cut your place your pattern on your fabric make sure you get a heavy object to place your pattern down so that when you're going to cut it it's not going to be moving around because girl if i told you the stress i went through this particular uh pattern while i was cutting it it was so stressful i tried to pin it the more i tried to pin it was shifting the fabric there the fabric underneath was not laying proper so it was shifting so i have to just pack all the scissors i have and put it on top just to get hold of it okay so now i'm going to be imputing my two inches so at the end of the day i actually added a 0 0.5 inch so instead of two inches i marked 2.5 inches because i want to fold use that 0 0.5 inch to fold in my my slip opening okay so right here i'm marking 2.5 inches so i also extend the line out and repeating the same measurement i have from my slip opening the initial one for the pattern and i place it back to the other end just to get everything accurate so basically that is it i'm done so the next thing i'm going to do i'm going to start by cutting out my fabric just like you see me doing okay i hope you understand what i'm doing 
I hope you can clearly see what I'm doing. Okay. So if you do, good for you. <laughs> but if you don't, please leave your comment below. Let me know when you find it confusing. Okay. So what I actually did, because I know to start turning around and stuff is going to be difficult. So I have to use my chalk to trace it out before cutting. So I first of all cut at the back. Okay. So the first one I cut was the back. So this is the front that I'm, I'm going to be working on. So what I'm doing here, I'm marking my one inch away. The one inch for the button allowance, that is what I'm doing, okay? I mark that one inch. Then the next thing, I'm going to get my my back pattern that I've already cut out, okay? I'm going to get it and then I'm going to place it there just like the way you see me. The reason why you need to do this is for you to have accurate cutting because sometimes when you want to cut out the fab uh, place the pattern separately to cut you may end up having one part of it longer than one part so the best thing you place the back pattern back to the front pieces that you need to cut out okay so that you can have everything equally okay so that is exactly what i'm doing right here place the back back the uh, back to the front pieces to cut out the back so the next thing now I'm going to bring back my pattern paper so that I can be able to get my my front neck uh, depth, okay? So that I can cut it out. So that is what I'm doing here. Once you place it there, you're going to use your chalk to trace it out like that. That was easy for me to get my neck depth cutting, uh, cut out successful, okay? So the next thing I'm going to slash and separate this there's two front remember the front has two pieces okay because it's a shirt dress it's a shirt top rather okay so basically this is it so now to cut out the the facing i got a a long red a tango just like you see me doing is is placed on fold okay this is being placed on fold so just to get my facing correct so i have to do what i'm doing so pay attention on this part okay get a red long a red uh, tango and the width should be more than enough on how much you want it to be okay so this one is uh, optional it depends how wide you want it to be it depending on you okay so yeah i have done cut tracing out the facing so the next thing now um i'm going to separate it like you see me doing okay and then I'm going to bring back one part of the front. And then I'm going to place my facing just like that. Okay. I'm going to place my facing like this. And then I'm going to go to the machine. And then I'm going to stitch it down with 0 0.5 inch allowance. Okay. First of all, I need to pin it down. Okay. I need to pin it first so that I can be able to uh, stitch it proper. All right. So once I'm done pinning, so this is my back pattern. Okay, so this is my back piece rather. It's being cut on fold, all right? So I'm going to head to the sewing machine to join my the, the facing to my front piece, okay? I'm going to do this to the both uh, second piece. So once I'm done, that I'm going to now work on the... As you can see, I've already joined the both parts. Okay, this is how it's going to look like. So the next thing now, I'm going to uh, iron it. So I, I have already weaved the rough edges. Okay, so what you're going to do before you you iron it, you're going when you're weaving it, you're going to attach a hemming gum to the edges so that by the time you're done uh, to iron it, it's going to be easy for you. As you can see, I have done the second piece. Okay. Yeah, I have done the second piece. Now, this is the sec the, sec uh, the last one. I'm going to iron it just like you see me doing, okay? But before I iron it close, I'm going to be attaching. I'm going to add the uh, interfacing, okay? Cut a interface that measure one inch wide, okay? And place it underneath like you see me doing. Because this is the part where we are going to make a buttonhole. I did for this part and also for the other side. So whichever way that you decide to put your buttonhole on, so everything should be okay for you to work with, okay? 
I hope you understand this. Cut interfacing that measure one inch and then the length it doesn't matter. So once you're done, you trim off the excess that you don't want. Trim it off just like you see me doing, okay? And voila. The two are ready. So the next, I'm going to get my back piece. Okay, so this is this is how it looks like. I'm going to get my back piece and uh, spread it on the table just like the way you see me doing, okay? And then I'm going to get my front piece, the right side facing the right side of the back piece like you see me doing, okay? And the same thing goes to the other side. I'm going to place it like that. And uh, what we are going to do first, we, we need to work on the shoulder, okay? I'm going to be pinning it like this so that I can go back to my sewing machine to join the two shoulder together, okay? Shoulder to shoulder together first. That is the first thing you need to do. Join your shoulder to shoulder first before you start working work on any part of your dress. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my sewing table now. I'm going to be joining it with 0 0.5 inch allowance. Remember, I kept 0 0.5 inch allowance while I was drafting the pattern. So this is the 0 0.5 inch allowance that I'm working with. So guys, you guys are going to pardon the background noise because I'm outside and it's actually noisy. So once I'm done, I'm going to... Okay, what I did, I went to my weaving machine and I weave the the part where I stitch. And then the next thing now, I'm going to start pinning the side. Okay, I'm going to pin the side by side so that I can close down the side. Basically, it's not that difficult, okay? Once you don't join your shoulder to shoulder, the next thing you do, you are going to close your side uh shirt together okay so as you can see i'm stitching with 0 0.5 inch allowance that i kept before so that is it we are on this uh, ironing table as you can see i have gone ahead to weave the the uh, the my hemming part okay that is the bottom part of my shirt i also i stitch uh, hemming gum on it so that when i'm going to join it uh to uh, what did they say? Okay, let's keep that aside. So what I'm doing here, I'm taking my round neck measurement because this is where you're going to uh, get your collar. Okay, I'm taking my round my round uh, neck measurement just like you see me doing. This is how you're going to do it. You're going to take the measurement so that you can be able to get an accurate. Uh, measurement to know how many inches you need to cut out for your collar okay this one doesn't require you to do so much all you just need to do is to measure round like you see me doing so that you can have an accurate uh, number so i have um uh 16 inches here yeah 16.5 inches that is the, the length that I'm going to cut out. So I'm going to be cutting out 17.5 inches. So that I will use 0 0.5 to turn in my the, the, the collar. Okay, so this is it. We are on the collar now. So this is the part you're going to pay attention. I have cut out the the width I cut out is 3 inches. While I was cutting out this part, the collar, my camera stopped recording because of the lack of the memory space, okay? So, yeah, the length I have here is a, is a nine, uh, is 18.5 inches because of the, because I want, I want to have some excess to join the side, like I said earlier, 17.5 inches, sorry, that was 17.5, and then I, did you see the way I uh, draw out the line? I didn't just bring it straight. I make it slantly. If you want to have these sharp edges, this is what you're going to do, okay? So I'm slowing down on this part because this is the part that you actually needed to see mostly when you are going to work on the collar, okay? As you can see, this is how my collar is looking like. I'm going to use this now to get the second piece so that because you need to use 
uh, cut a uh, interface uh, facing rather so that you use it to turn your color okay so before you're going to cut it make sure you arrange it proper if you have opportunity to use pin on it use pin and then you're going to trace it from the second one like that okay so i'm going to start by cutting it if you can notice this actually stressed me a lot so you're going to be extremely careful so that it will not shift because if it shifts one side may be longer and the other side may be shorter okay so it's something that you need to take uh time you need to be careful when you're working on it okay so i have done cut it out and the next i'm going to go and iron interfacing on top okay so i have done iron the interfacing on both of um, the one side right it's one side that i iron interfacing so one side is the main uh, piece and the other side is the lining okay so the part that you kept as a lining okay you're going to uh fold it in with 0 0.5 inch i'm going to show you that in a second okay see you're going to fold it in like that so that you use it to turn uh, to stitch uh, i don't know how to explain this but i'm going to show you that in a second i'm going to show you that you're going to fold you place it like you see me doing okay you're going to place it like that then you fold it in with a 0 0.5 okay as you can see this part is fold okay and then you're going to stitch it with 0 0.5 inch so once you 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 don't fold in that way then you're going to pin pin it so that it will allow you to stitch where you're going to start stitching it you need to pin it okay so that is what i'm doing as you can see i'm holding that 0 0.5 inch down then i pin at it okay this is going to be a little bit tricky but yeah sorry that the phone the it went out of focus that you can see exactly what i'm doing so what i did i pin all this part and also this part so this those are the part where i'm going to be sewing okay i'm going to stitch this part like you see where i'm directing you okay i'm going to stitch this part with 0 0.5 inch allowance So once you're done stitching it you're going to trim off the rough edges this part those stitching part okay and then you're going to tr uh, try to point out those the that's the sharp a, a part just like you see me doing okay so and try to measure them to be sure that they're equal so this is the part where i told you that i have that 0 0.5 inch fold in right so by the time you're done join the part where the interfacing is you're going to fold this one backward and then use it to uh, stitch in all the rough edges to the sleeves okay i'm going to show you how to go about that okay but for now we are go i'm going back to the machine and uh, my ironing table to give it a very good press before we attach it to my shirt okay so as you can see i have give it a very good press and uh, the total width i have left from this part here is two inches and minus the fold okay so that means if i open it everything is going to be 2.5 inches so i'm going to get my my shirt and then i'm going to get the collar like you see me doing okay i'm going to place it like that and then i'm going to uh, pin it down okay is it's actually advisable to pin it down before you head to head back to your machine to join it so it will help you guide you through when you're joining it okay all right so once i'm done pin this down because the proper way for me to work with this is when i pin it down so once if i pin it down like this I should be able to work with it freely so once i'm done i'm going to go to my sewing table and join it with 0 0.5 inch allowance okay uh yeah make sure you pin it so it will not distract you when you are joining because 
I just noticed something that when you're working with a color is actually not something that you rush it okay and you will take a proper care of it when you're working on it all right but once you understand how it's been made it's going to be a very easy and a simple something to me i learned this from vivian okeke there was a time where i was i was so scared to make a shirt she kept telling me it's very simple it's very simple until i made it <laughs> okay all right. all right now remember the 0 0.5 inch that i fold in for the lining okay as you can see i fold it backward like you see me doing to to uh, imbue those uh those rough edges from the the previous stitching that i stitched uh, to the shirt okay as you can see you are not seeing any rough edges from this part is because of folding that 0 0.5 inch back in okay so if you feel like the stitching is not going corresponding you switch it to the other part so that you can have everything lay in proper okay you see what i'm doing so take your proper care on this don't rush it take your time so that you can get your shirt done nice and clean so once i'm done i'm going to head back to my ironing table and iron everything nice and clean also i'm going to fold in my my hemming my my sleeve opening okay like i said earlier that you're going to stitch stitch um hemming gum to the sleeve while you are weaving it okay but if you cannot do that if you don't have a weaving machine then you have to fold in like you see me doing and then you're going to iron it okay fold it like this and then you use hemming gum it's advisable to use a hemming gum to to fold in the rough edges that you stitch it if you stitch it it's not going to look nice okay so thank you so much guys for watching thank you so much for this opportunity that you guys gave to me to recreate this dress it was fun recreating this dress uh this outfit so the next thing i'm going to do i will be i will create a buttonhole to face my my shirt okay that is what i'm going to do next because right now my shirt is ready the only thing that is holding it back now is the button okay thank you so much for watching and uh, i will be seeing you on my next sewing tutorial very soon i have a one dress that i made recently and i love it i think i'm going to recreate that dress for you guys okay so um this is the picture on the screen i'm going to recreate this but it's going to come on a short gown not a long gown like you're seeing okay yeah that is a tip of what is coming next okay yes so um i want to say once again thank you so much